Could you start? Okay, let me share my screen first. Hi, thank you, Motozuka Sensei. Good afternoon, everybody. Before I start, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Megano Fita, the head of Science and Technology Research Center of Universitas PGRI Smara, or called as UPGRIS. Previously, I studied in Ogasawara Lab for my master and doctor courses. I also enrolled as a postdoctoral researcher in there and in Chonbuk National University under the guidance of Kim Yang Su Sensei, who is also a member of the Big Alpha Society. Since 2011, I've been actively joining the Big Alpha annual meeting. Here I show you some pictures, and it was very, very good memories. And it was in Sizoka. And here is 2012 in Fukuoka, 2013 in Kyoto, 2014 was in Nagoya, but uh, I don't have any pictures of that. Uh, and 2015, I started my job in Indonesia and I couldn't attend the Big Alpha meeting, but I joined again in 2016, that was in Tokyo. Then uh, 2017 in Himeji, 2018 in Nagaoka, and 2019, that was the best moment in my life. Uh, it was in Indonesia. At the time, my university was the organizer. Thanks to you all, we hosted the event successfully. Uh, this is the picture of our university. Uh, we have seven faculties, consists of 21 undergraduate programs and five graduate programs. And this one is the picture of my students. And I'm glad and also honored because today in this uh, very nice opportunity, my boss, one of my boss, Dr. Seno Arsito Sensei, attending this meeting. So you already know before. And in Ugris, I pioneered an international journal called ASEP, an Advanced Sustainable Science, Engineering, and Technology. It is still new, but I'd like to encourage you to submit your articles in this journal. Okay, this opportunity, I'd like to talk about a study on the optical characteristic of um, transition metal ions in alpha alumina crystal using DVX alpha and DVMA method. Then um, I'd like to uh, give you all an illustration. In our daily life, we are often to talk about phosphor. It's not the one in the Spaniards, but it's this actually any material that when exposed to a radiation emits visible light. Here are the examples of compounds. Um, in a normal condition, it appears just white, uh, like a sugar. However, when they are exposed by UV light in 254 nanometers, they emit different colors like this. Then, um, in fact, phosphors are important. They are used in many applications such as backlighting, automotive signage, and of course, general illumination in housing, school, office, and etc. Especially in uh, general lighting, long time ago, we used candle. And then the after the electricity was discovered and Thomas Alpha Edison invented lamp, we use incandescent lamp. Since it is inefficient due to the energy loss in the form of heat, we use fluorescent lamp, which is very inefficient, very efficient, but unfortunately, it a consists of toxic mercury vapor. Then we started to use light emitting diode or LED. Here I show you the picture of wet LED lamp. If we open it, you'll see the electronic components um, like this. The small square chips here are the most important part here, the yellow uh, uh, chip, the yellow square here. Uh, it is consists of blue, um, LED chip coated with yellow phosphor. So this is the structure of uh, inside the current red LED. Uh, blue LED emits a blue light and converted into white light by the yellow phosphor. However, the color is a little bit bluish. Uh, it is because it lacks of a red component. And Compared to daylight spectra originating from sunlight, the current white LED lacks red component. That is why we see the bluish uh, white light. So why do we need uh, red components? Well, do you notice when we mix all paint colors, we will get black. 
Yes, because there are two different types of color mixing, subtractive and uh, additive. Subtractive is for paint color, absorbing all pigments, while the additive is for light source. You see there are three pigments colors, however, the results of color mixing is different. Actually, there are many ways to get the ideal white light, uh, such as mixing all uh, LED chips like uh, red, yellow, and blue. But this way is too expensive. Since the current red LED constructed from one blue LED chip coated with yellow phosphor, then adding red phosphor is the easiest and cheapest way. The blue LED chip emits blue light converted into white light by both the yellow and red phosphors. By this structure, we will get the ideal white light. So what is the ideal white light that we want from LED? The quality of white LED lamps generally depends on some parameters, such as the color coordinate, color temperature, and also color rendering index. Color coordinate specifies the appearance of an object to human eye. Color rendering index indicates the ability of light source to show the true color of an object. Then the color temperature indicates the temperature of the filament in case of light work or the temperature of the emitted light in the case of fluorescent and LED lamps. Uh, it is in Kelvin. Then, um, because of that, many researchers are trying so hard to find the suitable materials for the red phosphor used in white LED. We mostly concentrating on the transition metal and rare earth ions. We actively uh, we activated those transition metal ions in host crystal compounds uh, for the host crystal of fluoride compounds such as K2SIF6 or in oxide compounds like Al2O3. You can imagine in this world, the combination of dopant and host crystals are actually too many. Since the trial and error experiments are rather ineffective, time consuming and cost highly, therefore simulation using computer is really helpful. It is also very fortunate for me as well, because in my university, we don't have uh, enough tools to do experiment. That is why simulation is the best option for my research. This figure illustrates uh, the research hierarchy of um, um, experiment industry and theoretical also academic. And many people are doing experiments. Few people have their research, um, which can be applied in industrial scale. And less people are doing theoretical work. So this is our chance to get our work stand out. For the interpretation of optical properties and the multiplet energies, many approaches have been used. For example, the empirical approach ligand field theory proposed by Tanabe Sugano in the octahedral crystal field 3D orbital splits into two degenerate levels called EG and T2G, which the energy splitting between them called as crystal field splitting or 10DQ. And their multiple energies are um, has been summarized and known as Tanabe Sugano diagram. Some semi-empirical approaches, for example, Watanabe and Kamimura, who combined the LDA and LFT, Daul, who used the first principles calculation based on DFT theory, Seiho, who combined a hard reflux type calculation and configuration interaction, Grud, who used crystal field multiple calculation for Sains analysis. The last two approaches here are uh, the non-empirical methods, which we studied so far. Here I show you the history of DV method. DV method was first developed by Professor Ellis in 1970s in Northwestern University. And some of his students developed many uh, approaches like DMOL uh, developed by Professor Daly uh, from Switzerland, ADF by Professor Behrens from Netherlands, and our great Professor Adetti uh, developed DVX Alpha in 1978 from Kyoto University. And finally, DVMA method has been developed by Ogasawara Sensei, Kwansei Gakuin University. Uh, but actually, the development of uh, DV method has been done by many uh, researchers. So, um, 
uh, in brief, the software DVMA, discrete variational multi electron, uh, is pictured in here. And this is very useful to determine the spectral characteristic of a material. Then uh, the discrete variational multi electron DVMA versions, there are two for the non relativistic and the relativistic one. For analyzing the transition metal ions, we use non-relativistic one, but for rare earth ion, usually we just use a relativistic uh, version because in the transition metal ions, the relativistic effect is not so um, influenced, so can be neglected. Here is um, my list of application related to alpha aluminum. So if you are interested, you, are, you can download it and read it later. All of them are about uh, alpha alumina. Okay. Uh, in the case of 3D3 ion stop in crystal, the energy levels in octahedral crystal field are shown in here. There are some doublet states and quartet states. Quartet A2 is the ground state. The transition from ground state to quartet T2 and quartet T1A are responsible for the absorption process, while the transition from doublet E to the ground state quartet A2 is responsible for the emission process. In the search of novel red phosphor materials for red LED, manganese to uh, manganese for plus job fluorides materials such as K2SIF6 or K2TIF6 uh, have been shown to have good luminescence properties. However, uh, since fluoride materials are sensitive to high temperature and high humidity, therefore red phosphor based on oxide materials are desired. So the purpose of this research is to investigate the optical characteristic of the transition metal uh, ion top in alpha alumina in detail, including uh, molecular orbital energy, multiple energy, absorption spectra, the pressure dependence, and also the quality of the emitted light, which can be represented by the color, color coordinates. As the calculation for um, Molecular orbital energy, uh, we utilize the TVX alpha method. And for the many electron calculation to calculate the um, multiple energy and also absorption spectra, we use the VMA method. Uh, during the calculation, we also consider some uh, effects such as uh, energy correction, configuration dependent correction, CDC, and also correlation correction, CC. Other than that, um, Okay, before I explain the CDC, the other effect here, CDC explanation. CDC corrects the energy difference between configuration uh, in the left side, and then CC corrects the energy difference between the multiplex split. So other than CDC, CC, I also consider lattice relaxation uh, effect. So basically when we submit one transition metal ions or any ions to the system, then the bond lengths are changed depending on the material itself, like can be shorter or longer. So um, there are uh, several ways to estimate the lattice relaxation effect. The simplest one is by uh, Shannon's crystal radii. Uh, you can see the formula like this. But, and we also studied the combination of Shannon's crystal radia with EXAF's experiment. And we also uh, investigated the geometry optimization using CASTEP. Uh, fortunately, uh, CASTEP can also be used to predict the uh, pressure effect. The first part of this talk will be D3 ions in alpha alumina. I constructed um, model cluster consisting of 63 atoms from alpha alumina crystal structure data we can obtain it from find it software then uh, here is the picture for molecular orbital mo energy without considering lattice relaxation and with considering uh, this relaxation effect um in uh, the most important thing is without lattice relaxation effect, we see that uh, the impurity levels the 2G and EG here mix with conduction band in the case of vanadium 2 plus. For the other materials, they are fine, but just in case of vanadium 2 plus, uh, it should be a solve because if we just use a model like this, we cannot calculate the multiple calculation. 
or CI calculation. So we have to separate them. So we perform uh, the so-called orbital relaxation effect. We perform um, excites half electron tentatively uh, like this. So from T to G to EG states. Then after we perform the orbital relaxation, we obtain the uh, spectra, absorption spectra like this. There are no different with, uh, in the case of chromium 3 plus or manis 4 plus, but in the case of vanadium 2 plus, the absorption spectra move to the lower energy. Then this is the uh, results with uh, different computational condition. Uh, we see that uh, the calculation considering all effects agrees the experimental very well. Okay. Here, in the case of manganese for plus, uh, because lattice relaxation effect is 100% and CC is one, that means no correction at all in the case of manganese for plus. But uh, for the case of vanadium two plus and chromium three plus, lattice relaxation CTC and CC improves the energy. So here, uh, if we picture the multiple energies of D3 ions in alpha alumina for u band and y band then uh, we will get increasing tendency of both u band and y band in the order of vanadium 2 plus, chromium 3 plus, and manganese 4 plus. Now we are coming to the geometry optimization of ruby under pressure, which was performed using CASTEP code. Uh, in the case of non-optimized cluster, we just obtain the crystal structure data with pressure, already with uh, pressure, from finite software. The pressure is ranged from 0 to 113 GPA. But in the case of optimized cluster, we just use zero uh, pressure of alpha alumina, and then we adjust the uh, pressure by ourselves using custom and we get the uh, optimized structure like this. So uh, here is the optimized ALO bone length. Since there are two different types of bone length, like D1 and D2, D1 is for the shorter bone length, while D2 for the longer bone length, we uh, distinguish them uh, by D1, D2, and the average. The black symbols here are the experimental data. You see the all uh, bonds here decrease as the increasing pressure. And here is a, a picture of the optimized transition metal oxygen bond length for chromium oxygen and manganese oxygen like this. Uh, you see chromium oxygen bond length are longer than manganese oxygen bond length. Next, um, we are coming to the discussion of chromium 3 plus in alpha alumina under pressure, especially based on many electron calculation using DBMA method. Uh, um, the MO energy levels using GVX alpha method uh, for Ruby non optimized cluster and the optimized cluster. Uh, the relative energy difference between T2G and the valence band becomes closer here. And this crystal field splitting, 10 dq, become um, also short, uh, smaller compared to the non-optimized and optimized class, but uh, the impurity levels are increased. Next, this is the picture for energy diagram of Ruby under pressure for non-optimized cluster without and with CTCCC, optimized cluster without and with CTCCC. The symbols here uh, are the experimental data, while our calculation are shown by lines. So the doublet states are shown in um, R, R prime and B, while the quartet states are shown by U and Y bands. Then um, we can see here the lattice relaxation and CDCCC give an excellent agreement with the experimental data. So you see here, they are very, very close to the experimental data. And this one, we invest investigated further for C factor, lambda, C lambda, J, A, O, J, M, O, and also J effect if they are the Coulomb repulsion effect. 
you see the GAO, JMO, and Lambda here increase as the increasing pressure. But since the C factor, the corre correlation correction decrease, then JF factor is also decreased. This is because uh, it implies that uh, there is competition between the Coulomb electron electron repulsion and the correlation correction. Which um, decreasing trend, which is suitable with the decreasing trend of uh, doublet states. Okay, in this part, I will show you the results of multiplet energy calculation based on one electron diffusion alpha method. We know that it is has been it has been almost impossible to calculate multiplet energies based on one electron approach, but here we successfully calculated them at least for R line energy. Onishi Sugano in um, he, the report in 1982, they reported that they have been successfully uh, estimated the chromium oxygen uh, bond length versus multiple energy and pressure for um, chromium O6 material. And they compared the, the result with the data of Ruby. But actually, their calculation are. Uh, uh, accidentally, accidentally agree with the experimental data. Uh, I will show you the reason. So in their calculation, they calculated the uh, R-line energy based on the gravity center of the three states here, doublet E, doublet T1, and doublet T2. But actually, it, it should be not only three levels here, but it should be four multiplets, including quartet A2. And their calculation uh, was based on O8 symmetry, but our calculation will be with C3 symmetry. So in the work of Ognisi Sugano, they interpreted uh, R line to the transition from quartets to the doublets. However, if we see carefully, doublet, uh, delta ER is the spin flip transition energy based on one electron calculation from T to G up spin to T2G down spin. That is a transition with spin states as the half to as the minus half. And this is actually just a reverse component. However, in the actual materials, the transition is occurred between spin state as the three half to as the half. Therefore, delta ER should correspond to the gravity center of uh, the four uh, states here, including quartet A2. Then the transition uh, from quartet A2 to, to quartet A2 is also uh, considered. These are uh, the calculation. I obtained this value from the reference here, uh, Sugano Tanabe Kamimura books, multiplets of transition metal ions in crystal. We obtained the uh, energy here, the left one, and we got the calculation like this. The relative energy is uh, estimated from quartet A2 to each level. These are the degenerate levels. And without, without considering quartet A2, we obtain the calculation like this. So it is uh, the equation it should be like this. But when we consider the A quartet A2 for SE half, then uh, the calculation will be different. Okay, so now how to estimate the delta ER and delta EU? We uh, introduced the structure transition state method. We will excite half electron for delta ER from T2G up spin to the T2G down spin, half electron. So we obtain the energy difference between T2G up spin and T2G down spin here with the pink one. And for the Slater's transition for delta EU, uh, it's simply by estimating 10 dq. It is the same. So uh, we excite half electron from T2G, uh, T2G up spin to the EG up spin also. We got the blue equation here. Next, uh, these are the results for our calculation for R and U uh, pan non-optimized cluster and optimized cluster, including uh, this is for seven atom model cluster. 
Okay. We introduce new formula here. You see the black symbols here are the experimental data, but our calculation will be the colored lines. Okay, then uh, we see the agreement for the optimized cluster using seven auto model cluster is uh, better than the op non optimized cluster uh, in the left side. The calculated R line energies agree the experimental data excellently. These are the result for 63 atom model cluster. We also perform additional calculation to investigate the tendency of U band and TendQ. The calculations were performed by seven atom cluster model with OA symmetry here uh, by simple DBMA method. The results show that U-band has higher energy than crystal field splitting. This is the real material, C3 symmetry, and this is for OH symmetry. They are higher than the OH symmetry. So in any case, U-band energy is higher, and uh, the Onisi and Sugano results are just a simple estimation a prediction from just the DQ, but actually it's not. Next. Um, we want to talk about how we predict the optical properties of manganese for plus ions in alpha alumina under pressure. So uh, there are the picture for molecular orbital energy for non-relax and using CASTEP. Yeah, it's increased like this. And here are the energy diagrams under pressure. Since we only have uh, one experimental data at zero pressure, therefore our results here are just prediction. But what we see here, the most important thing is in the case of doublet states, R, R prime and B lines, they are decreased as the pressure increase. While for the quartet states, they are increased as the pressure increase. Uh, these predictions are uh, similar with the tendency of Ruby. We also calculated the uh, Coulomb integrals, Coulomb effective, and the results are similar, which um, implies that J effective is uh, the main cause of the decreasing tendency of R line energy. Next uh, is the discussion for transition metal three plus ion job in alpha alumina. So we want to investigate the substitution effect of different dopant ions with the same ionic charge in the same crystals. We try to study how titanium three plus vanadium three plus chromium three plus manganese three plus ferrum three plus and cobalt three plus and um, we we just have chance for a small number like vanadium 3 plus, chromium 3 plus, and manganese 4 plus, and also cobalt. Not for titanium and ferrum because we still don't have time. Okay, first one is the discussion for vanadium 3 plus. Uh, in the case of vanadium 3 plus in alpha alumina, the uh, pure one. Well, all these parameters are shown in the above, but uh, for bond length in D1 and D2 are shown in the below. You see here when uh, without dopant before lattice relaxation effect, uh, it's 1.855 here, and it increased to 1.956. It's also the same happens with D2, 1.971. For after lattice relaxation effect 2.079. This calculation was done by uh, CASTEP method. Here is the molecular orbital MOA energy of uh, alpha alumina top with vanadium 3 plus for seven atom model cluster in the left panel and 63 model uh, cluster in the right panel. We see here when we consider lattice relaxation effect, the 10 dq decrease. Yes, but okay. Here the tables of uh, their energy values. And we also perform the absorption spectrum here. Uh, the first peak is uh, 
uh, first pig belongs to the tripletitu stage, and the second pigs uh, belong to tripleti one stage. Since vanadium three plus belongs to D two uh, configuration, so it is simply the transition from the ground state to their each state. Uh, next, this is the investigation for molecular orbital energy of alpha alumina doped with manganese three plus. We compare three different lattice relaxation effects. The first one on relaxation, Shannon's, and then Castep. We get the results that uh, 10 dq decrease in the order of non relaxation, and then Shannon, and then Castep. Castep shows the smallest crystal field splitting or 10 dq. Okay, and this uh, slide shows you the absorption spectrum of alpha alumina top with manganese 3 plus. Since manganese 3 plus belongs to D4 configuration, then the transition energy for the peak shown here are uh, for the transition energy from uh, 5E to 5D2. In this case, um the experimental data was obtained for high spin state but our calculation are for low spin states and this one is the result for the molecular orbital energy of alpha alumina doped with cobalt 3 plus the picture here we compared non-relaxation shannon and cast step again uh, it increases in the order of non relaxation, Shannon and also Castep. We uh, just constructed using uh, seven atoms only. Okay, and here are the absorption spectrum of alpha alumina doped with cobalt 3 plus. Uh, for non relaxation, we show here many peaks. Shannon also shows many peaks here but custom model uh, we show only two peaks here experimental also uh, shows only two peaks however in our calculation once again we just use a uh, low spin state but the experimental data we have for um high spin state so actually they cannot be compared okay and then uh this is the last part of my work so far I want to talk about the chromaticity coordinates of Ruby. Uh, actually, we can calculate the color coordinates based on the absorption spectra that have been obtained from DVMA calculation. So after molecular orbital calculation using DVMA, DVX alpha method, then we do calculation with um, DVX alpha method from multiple energies and then absorption spectra. So with that uh, result, we can calculate color coordinate. Since the transmittance is uh, expressed like this, Okay, the intense uh, T transmittance uh, can be uh, defined as the ratio between the intensity of incident light and the transmitted light. Then the absorption absorbance can be uh, expressed in the minus logarithmic function of uh, the the ratio of I and I zero. Therefore, the transmittance T can be obtained by uh, this function. Therefore, the the three stimulus values x, y, z can be obtained by using this formula. P lambda denotes the standard illumination D65. Generally, uh, the absorbance is proportional to the molar absorption coefficient epsilon, the molar concentration of the particles, in this case, chromium ions, C, and the sample thickness L. Therefore, a multiplication of the absorbance by a scalar such as A2 equals uh, A A1 lambda here means that the concentration and or the sample thickness are changed so that C2 L2 equals A C1 L1 is satisfied. Finally, the color coordinate XY chromaticity here can be expressed like this. 
by using the seven atom cluster model without considering lattice relaxation effect uh, without and with considering CDCCC, we obtain absorption spectrum like this and we get the chromaticity diagram like this we see here simple simple ci calculation and ci with correction CDCCC agrees with the ruby experimental data here is the conclusion Okay, CASTEP can be used to estimate uh, lattice relaxation and uh, even the uh, pressure effect. Okay, I think uh, you can read the conclusion by yourself. And thank you very much for, if you want to contact me, you can contact me here in this email. And I'd like to thank all the committee members and also my uh, university for supporting me and for the Distinguished Contribution Award winner. Thank you very much. Questions and advice are welcome. Thank you very much for the interesting presentation. Uh, now let's open questions and comments from the audience. Do you have uh, any questions? Okay, so uh, Mega Sensei, thank you very much. Uh, your presentation is a very nice for us. Uh, my question is uh, one is uh, uh, pressure dependence. Uh, you have studied uh, study up to the 100 or 120 giga pascals. Uh, 120 giga pascal is uh, what situation for use uh, do you assume? Okay, I will directly answer or waiting for another questions. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. the, uh, uh, my uh, another question is uh, okay. effect effect. Uh, can you can you calculate? Can you create a model uh, with a defect effect? Can you? Just finish. Okay, okay, easy, easy, easy. Thank you very much for the questions. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it because sometimes when I talk in English, nobody asks. <laughs> so <laughs> it's really my uh, honor. Okay, mm -hmm. first uh, about the, wait a moment, I will share the pressure mm -hmm. slide. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, yeah. can you see this? Sure. Okay. So in the case of a pressure effect for non-optimized cluster, mm -hmm. I just use Sonomama, Sonomama uh, crystal structure from FindIt. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah. There, are, there are many crystal structure data in FindIt, which mm -hmm. includes uh, mm -hmm. the pressure effect. So I, I, I'm not sure, more than 10 I use here, mm -hmm. more than 10 of crystal structure. But in the case of optimized cluster, mm -hmm. uh, using uh, CASTEP code here, mm -hmm. Actually, I just want to uh, make my models or make my calculation to be similar with what I have. Mm -hmm. I, I have uh, only 1 to 113 GPA for mm -hmm. that cluster from finding. So that means uh, in this case, the alpha alumina crystal structure is remain the same, not mm -hmm. changed to the other uh, materials like mm -hmm. Uh, RH203, mm. yeah, because uh, some too, too much pressure, mm. I mean, like after 113 GPA, mm. I, I once saw the um, reference that mm. it changed, the structure mm. was changed, it's not alpha alumina anymore, mm -hmm. okay. because too much, too much stress. Uh, so uh, 100 gigapascal is a limitation for alumina? Yes, mm -hmm. yes limitation, ah. after that it changed for the phase. How about is my second question? The second question is about defect effect, right? The defect effect, uh, I've been trying when I was in Ogasawara lab, but actually since a little bit uh, difficult, not easy, oh, but <laughs> not easy one, because when we consider defect effect, like I showed you before, there is mixing orbitals mm -hmm. from impurity levels and conduction band. Mm -hmm. If that's happened, then I couldn't calculate CI calculations. Mm -hmm. I couldn't perform CI calculation. I can do CI calculation mm -hmm. uh, in the condition there mm -hmm. is no mixing in impurity levels and in conduction band. Mm -hmm. 
So if okay, so mixing, no problem. But if there is mixing, then mm, we have to think what should we do next. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Prof. C. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I am very interested. Thank you, for no Professor Novita. And uh, my question was uh, exactly the same as Professor Ishii. So it was okay. so good. thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you, Professor Isiara. Maybe uh, I just published the results in optical materials journals. Uh, maybe if you are interested to um, read more, or maybe you can download the paper. And also, maybe if you're still curious about something, you can email me. So, thank you. Thank you. yeah, I show you the list of my publication like this it should be on 2020 it is in number uh nine and ten oh sorry yes nine and ten nine and ten then nine uh the number nine here is the only for molecular orbitals calculation but for number 10 here is a full uh ci calculation multiplet energies and absorption spectrum now I'm in the progress of publishing one more paper about the color coordinates. So maybe later, if it is published, then please read my paper. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Sensei. Uh, I'm very sorry to have to limit the interesting discussion, but we have to remain on schedule. So, uh, everyone, could you? Uh, uh, Zuka Sensei. Time. 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 Okay, so uh, could you tell me your future plan of your research using the DVM method? Oh, yeah, Motozuka Sensei, thank you. So, uh, this year and the next year, just two years from now, I got a uh, research grants that should be um, uh, carried out in the theme of rare earth materials. So. Uh, probably this year and next year, I will focus on rare earth materials, uh, non uh, relativistic with a DVMA method. And I also have another theme for research. <laughs> so I do many research actually because now I'm I'm working in my university, not only in one department but also um, three departments. Departments. So, you know, in my university right now, um, less doctor. So uh, that's why I was, I'm, I belong to many departments to support every department. So in the informatics department, I do some um, uh, more programming. And in the science department, I will do more chemical uh, research. That is my plan in the uh, near future. But next, hopefully, there will be another chance to have um, conferences like international conferences or national conferences because uh, I want to spread more and introduce more DVX alpha and DVMA methods. So now I'm <laughs> collaborating with many researchers. Hopefully, I can. Uh, also collaborate with uh, the members of the Big Alpha Society because um, I'm pursuing a professor's degree in my university. It's actually still uh, very, very competitive. It is very hard, <laughs> but I try to survive myself here. Um, and I'm so happy because of this year, I got these uh, awards from the Big Alpha and it motivates me to do better and better in the future. So uh, this year, I tried to collaborate with uh, my friends, my colleagues in the China and also in uh, United States. So they are also uh, 
uh, were students in Ogasawara Lab, so it's going to be uh, fun because we were uh, the same uh, year, maybe same age, not so different in age. So it will be easier to communicate. So I also welcome all of you if you have chance for me to join your research, or at least we can have a research grant together. Uh, my research fund like applying for japan country or indonesia country so next time if we have a uh, opportunity to have research grant i will uh, inform you maybe if we have time yeah thank you, thank you so much uh, dr mega okay so our uh, time is coming uh and so uh just more please so uh this session is now closed and let's move on award ceremony ah. Sorry, uh, could, uh, to everyone, uh, could you turn on your uh, microphone and uh, clap your hand? えっとではですね、あの表彰式の方に移りたいと思います。え、小畑先生よろしくお願いいたします。えっと、いきなり僕の方に来るんですか。まずいですか。どうぞ。いや、いや、いいですよ。えっと、あの、表彰式行いたいと思いますが、えっと、えっと、ちょっと待ってくださいね。え、よいしょ。うんと。順番が